So, <coughs> section one point two. Having said that, if we don't finish both of these today, it's it's not a bad thing. We've got plenty of time built into our schedule. But section 1.2, I forget what the textbook calls it, but I call it building functions, taking simple functions and combining them and creating more complicated functions. And there are a few ways we can do this. And the simplest way is arithmetic. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide functions. So if we have a function f of x equals x squared minus one, and we'll do our trig crash review today, but maybe g of x is the sine of x. Well, we could add these functions together or divide them or multiply them or subtract them. Let's just, let's just do two of those things. F plus G of X is, well, it's F of X plus, G of X. No tricks, nothing fancy. We can take those expressions and add them together and get a new function. Or we could take G divided by F of X. That's the sine of X divided by x squared minus one. It's this function divided by this function. And I said two, but actually why don't we do a There we go. Why don't we do a third, just to illustrate, you always want to be a little careful when you have subtraction. G minus F of X is the sine of X minus, Get us a little more space to work with. It's the sine of X minus F of X. X squared minus one. And the only point I want to make here is that you should remember that if you have subtraction and then you have something in parentheses, that subtraction is going to distribute. So this is the sine of X minus X squared plus one. This subtraction distributes over this subtraction minus a negative is a positive. And we have, this is sort of um, a concept that is in one sense very important in calculus. And it's kind of 
trivial, I think it's fair to say, but it is necessary. What we really want to do here is not ourselves, is not ourselves, Z S, I can't spell. You'll have to get used to that. Um, is not build functions up ourselves, but we do need to be able to recognize them when we see them. If you see f of x equals x squared plus the sine of x divided by x. You just need to be able to look at it and you need to be able to say, okay, we're adding some things together here. We're adding together x squared with the sine of x divided by x. And then you need to be able to look at this and you need to be able to recognize, okay, this thing we are adding is itself a quotient. So there's both addition and subtraction division going on here. You need to be able to recognize that. And you need to be able to recognize kind of which is dominant. That even though there is division, what we have here is a sum. It's x squared plus the sine of x divided by x. And the reason it's important to be able to do this, I mean, trying to look ahead a little, we're going to learn to do a calculus with elementary functions. Like we'll learn to do a calculus with the sine, and we'll learn to do a calculus with x squared, and we'll learn to do a calculus with x. And then we're going to learn rules for when we have functions built up from simpler functions. So if we know how to, I'm, I'm done with the air quotes. If we know how to do calculus with the sign and we know how to do calculus with X, we can do calculus with the sign of X divided by X. We learn a quotient rule. But of course, in order to use the quotient rule, you have to be able to look at this and say, it is a quotient. It's no use being able to deal with division if you don't recognize it when it happens. Likewise, addition will learn a sum rule, but it's no use being able to deal with a sum if you don't recognize addition when it's happening. So this isn't something that students generally struggle with, but it's always worth mentioning. The bulk of this section is taken up with something a little more intricate. And that is composition. So say you have the square root of the sine of x. This function is clearly built from the square root function and from the sine function. <laughs> but it's not built arithmetically. 
it's not a sum, difference, product, or quotient. Instead, we have one function inside of another function. And this is an example of composition. And composition is what I just said. It's when you have one function stuck inside the parentheses of another function. If you let, nope, can't use F, we've already used that. If we let H of X be the square root function and G of X be the sine function, then we can evaluate H of G of X exactly the same way we were evaluating F of X plus H yesterday and the day before. G of X is replacing X over on the left. So it also replaces X over on the right. The square root of G of X. And G of X is the sine of X. So this composition here is what we had on the left. It's the square root of the sine of X. And just like I was saying previously, when we were looking at the arithmetic, I said that, well, we're not really interested in doing a bunch of arithmetic, but we want to be able to recognize it. We went are not going to be doing a bunch of composition in this course, but we want to be able to recognize it when it happens. And recognizing composition is maybe a little less obvious than recognizing addition or subtraction or division. So let's talk a little about recognizing composition. So composition occurs when one function is inside another. And this is very literal if we have F and then we have the parentheses and inside the parentheses, instead of a number, we have another function. That's what <coughs> composition is. And this, this is actually a, a formal phrase. I put it in quotation marks up here, but we say that the function inside the parentheses is the inside function of the composition. And we say that the function outside the parentheses is, 
is the outside function. And we want to recognize composition, but more than just recognizing composition, we want to be able to identify inside functions and outside functions. And that terminology is extremely literal. You know, we see it here, the inside function is inside parentheses. Let's say h of x is the sine of 2x squared plus 1. Well, this function is built up from the two simpler functions. It's built up from the sine, and it's built up from a 2x squared plus 1. And you see the 2x squared plus 1 is inside the sine. These parentheses are the start and the end of the sine, and literally inside of it is sitting this other function. And the function that's literally inside of something else is the inside <laughs> function. And then the function it's inside is the outside function. Another example, let's call it k of x equals, let's just build up from this a little, k of x can be 2 times the sine of 2x squared plus 1. Well, this is still fundamentally the same problem as before. This time our outside function is twice the sine instead of the sine. Our inside function is still literally inside. And that's sort of the guidance that's going to steer you right for the rest of the course, just understanding this terminology to be very literal and asking yourself, well, what function is inside what other function? So if you have x squared plus the sine of x raised to the tenth. We have a power function. We have a raising to the tenth power. And we have an x squared plus the sine of x. And again, just looking literally at the parentheses, Everything inside the power function is inside the power function. It's the inside function. And the power function, the thing outside the parentheses, is the outside function. What would, if f of x equals three times the natural log 
of x squared plus one, what would the inside function be? The x squared plus one. The x squared plus one. That's it exactly. Once again, you see this very literal terminology inside the parentheses is the inside function outside the parentheses is the outside function. Maybe just one for example, this might be less, less immediate. What if you have two times e to the x squared? What's the inside function here? So do the two e. So as I say, it's a lot less obvious because we don't have those parentheses notation that we're used to. It might help. There's an alternate notation for the exponential function that you sometimes see. Like you, you see this a lot when people are typing and they don't want to deal with powers and stuff. And it's just to literally write exp for x. And then that x squared goes inside the parentheses. And this notation makes the inside outside terminology once again extremely literal sitting inside the parentheses is x squared, our inside function. And we all come back to this. It's sort of, I mean, kind of the difficulty sometime of having these prerequisite sections where we do all of this material and then we kind of drop it. And then in section 3.5 or whatever, we're suddenly talking about inside and outside functions again. So I'll remind everyone of all of this when the time comes, but for now, it's good that we have reviewed this a little. And in reference to what I said at the beginning of class, that these sections are much shorter than 1.2, I believe, Yes, that's all there is to section 1.2, and we will dive in to 1.3. I'm going to, I don't know if any of my, any 